Honourable Member for Athabasca Sturgeon Redwater. I'd like to uh, speak strongly against this amendment. Yeah, um, I've actually, until recently, I was a licensed life and accident and sickness insurance agent. As well, uh, you know, I represent the company that uh, with the uh, largest farm insurer in Canada, and um, I dealt have dealt you know with insurance with hundreds of farmers over the years, and I've dealt directly with the types of products that uh, the honourable members are referring to. And um, unfortunately, um, I think that this amendment is in fact meaningless because there is no private enterprise equivalent to WCB. And I'm going to explain why that is. Um, and I think that it is really, really unfortunate to see members being so irresponsible um, to think that they can give, uh, you know, give professional advice to farmers without understanding how insurance really works. Um, unfortunately, many farmers are in fact misinformed about the type of coverage that they carry. That was something that we were always very careful about when speaking with farmers, right? Um, a lot of farmers, you're talking about the $16 a month insurance, that could only be one product. That could only be an accidental death and dismemberment policy. Um, those policies are extremely limited. They tend to provide cash payouts if certain things happen. And to pay out on death, it tends to be you have to die within a certain period of time. And there are other exemptions as well. Um, secondly, I know a lot of farmers are misinformed to think that we already carry employers' liability as part of their farmers' general liability insurance policy. Um, every one of those policies, unless it's specifically stipulated in the declarations, um, has some very, very strong, uh, you know, kind of limitations. Um, the biggest one is that if you have, uh, if you have uh, wages in excess of 10000 a year, um, there's no coverage. And secondly, it is how it's being characterized. You have to be liable in order, as the, uh, as the uh, owner, you have to be liable in order for the policy to pay out. And it does mean, unfortunately, that sometimes, uh, you know, farm laborers do have to take, uh, take the court, right? Because, I mean, uh, insurance companies have a fiduciary obligation to protect, uh, you know, their, uh, their premium holders' money too. Um, so, I mean, those are some of the reasons why. Um, the other reason why WCB is actually a uh, superior product and no way equivalent is because um, WCB and OHS were meant to work together. Now, part of the reason we've been having all of these issues with you know, how many injuries, how many disabilities, how many lost times are involved is because we don't have any good information, and that's because there are no reporting requirements as it stands now within our industry. Um, if we have mandatory WCB coverage, that information then goes to OH&S, and then OH&S can then work to actually you know, investigate it. Because we're not just talking about covering people when they become disabled or injured, we're talking about actually reducing injuries and disabilities. Now, there's another reason why, and it's a built-in incentive for the industry. The, how the way the WCB works is that if the industry has a better, uh, better experience with, um, with fatalities and injuries, then everybody's premiums go down. So everybody has a stake in doing what they can to reduce injuries. Right? Um, and then finally, speaking from the private insurance side, dealing with many, you know, trying to track where people have to have insurance, um, if you make the private insurance option mandatory and go that way as an option, it's going to be a paper chasing nightmare um, because you're going to be having to send certificates here and there and elsewhere. How do you, um, how do you actually enforce this uh, in a way that's going to be as efficient as WCB? Uh, last point I want to make, I mean, this is something that's fundamental to, uh, to how insurance works. Generally speaking, uh, we call it within the business, it's the law of large numbers. And that means that the larger a group um, of uh, you know, people you have insured, um, the better experience you have, and it gives you two things. One is you're able to spread risk a lot better, there where you'll be able to adjust your premiums. And um, you know, the, second, uh, the second thing is that you're going to have lower administrative costs. But the biggest thing is being able to predict uh, you know, with better accuracy how many claims you're going to have. So, um, you know, for those reasons, uh, I think that it's uh, actually kind of irresponsible to suggest that private insurance can, uh, can replace it. Now, that being said, I mean, the honorable members are correct in that WCB does have some major flaws. I mean, the biggest flaw, of course, is that you have to be injured or disabled at work. However, 
insurance companies, and I sold these products, already offer um, drop-down coverages and wrap-around coverages. And so if, uh, you know, if farmers are concerned about premiums, they can talk to their agent and they can actually, uh, you know, remove the worksite thing. If they're concerned about dealing with WCB, they can have drop-down coverage or they can have the 24-hour you know, 24 non-occupational. The thing is, is that there are solutions for this. So, once again, I'd like to speak against the amendment. Thank you for your attention.